So after a recent large shipment of tools from Weha, we were like a bunch of magpies as we dove into the box to see if we could replace some of those historic tools we've got in our kit with new, updated and better versions. And you believe you've done exactly that, Gordon? Yeah, this, this vault detector from Weha took my eye, Gary. Now I'd normally call this a, a, a voltage, voltage stick. And I'd call it a voltage pen, and I've got my original one here, but we're just going to stop you there. There is no way that we're suggesting that these devices should be used in replacement for safe isolation. Safe isolation will use an approved voltage indicator to GS38, a proving unit, and the appropriate locking off kit and procedure in order to identify a circuit, safely isolate it, and safely work on it. However, we believe this can perhaps be that exploratory look at a system and maybe indicate one or two things to you. So to prove it, when I take my voltage pen stick or voltage indicator, whatever you want to go with, and take it down towards a live cable, we can see my end is now a little red. A bit like, uh, a bit like E.T.'s finger, Gary. Okay, yes, I'd like to go home as well. <laughs> and yours does what? Okay, so the first thing I like about this, this, this just feels better. Like ergonomic grip, if you're going to be wandering around all day, this has got a better, better feel to it. There's a power on indicator. So okay. at least I know that actually the device is powered up and yeah, battery's working. So again, yeah, I'll go near to the cable and bingo. I, oh. get, a, I get a red light as well, Gary. Wow, how it's improved. So you, you're saying you turn yours on, it tells you it's on. Yeah. And when you get near something that's live, it goes red. Yeah, but this has got a tiny little probe. Okay. So I can get into there. So yeah, okay, fine on our nice roomy UK plugs, but if that was an American plug, you might struggle to get in there. I might do, and it, it won't bother me that much. Okay, so what we're suggesting there is that you can turn yours on. Mm -hmm. What if you don't turn it off, Gordon? Uh, well, the green light will stay on and eventually it'll go off and the batteries run out. Okay, so ergonomically, let's have a feel. Yeah. So ergonomically, that feel, yeah, you're right, I, I agree with that. Yeah, and I do like the tip and all the rest of it, so when we find, yeah, there we go. But that's not really trumped me, has it? Okay, well, let me take you back in time, since okay. you like talking old, Gary. This likes, is old school. Gary likes going back in time. Uh, what was your first car? Austin Metro, green. Austin Metro. Mine I had an Austin Metro as well. White, D77NUG, if it's still on the road, uh, let me know. Um, did you have uh, wing mirrors on both sides? Two wing mirrors, yeah, either side, yes. Two wing mirrors. Did you have a headrest? Uh, both chairs had headrests. Yeah. The dashboard where all the switches were, were they all populated with loads of switches? Even to the point I added an extra rev counter in my one. Right. Now, see, I didn't have any of that. I was like, the, that switch panel was empty. It was like, look at what you could have had if the original owner, and I was probably the third owner, had spent more money on the car. Okay, I even added a subwoofer and bass speaker onto a parcel shelf I had to make myself, Gordon. So oh. that wasn't standard either. Yeah. So where are you taking us with this story then, okay. Carl Lane? So this is, the, this is my Austin Metro. Okay. But you clearly had the gear version if you were in the Ford world. They'd call it the gear. And clearly the empty panel on this, there's some room in here for some other features in the gear version okay we get those extra features okay so go on and talk me through what the this one's got okay, the minus so the got. first extra feature you get you get a torch okay no torch yeah okay i switch it on okay get a, a buzzer okay so we yeah. get a noise and now i'm going near the cable okay this is going to be impressive get closer to the cable and there you go now if i go into the socket Okay. So, and, oh, and, and? So the voltage range has increased on this. So that, the, the non-gear version goes from 90 to 1,000 volts. This goes from 12 volts to 1,000 volts, AC, AC only. What if I leave it on? And if you leave it on after four minutes, the, uh, the voltage detector goes off, or 15 minutes on the torch. So it function. turns itself off? Turns itself off. Okay, so I can't turn behind. So, okay, so ergonomically again, let's have another feel. I'll take it feels exactly the same as the other one. Okay. Does it beep when it comes near people as well? So yeah, well, all these things do. Yeah. Well, it's your electrifying personality, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> Back to you. Okay, okay, so some people don't like a buzzer. Okay, so example being, I can see that as live. Okay, no yep. buzzer needed. Okay, so if you, if you get yeah, okay, the buzzer can be quite annoying, admit that. There, there are other things that can be quite annoying as well that yeah. are difficult to turn off. So if I switch that on and get a little flash of the LED, 
Okay, and what's that going to indicate to me? I can switch the buzzer off. Oh, right, okay. So no buzzer needed, but you'll still get that, you know, the, the LEDs stroking up the screen itself, yeah? Okay. Is that live or not? So I've now powered this up. Yeah. Without the buzzer. Okay. And now I've just got the little LED bar graph that goes up there. A bit like the, a bit like one of those old graphic equalizers you've probably had on your car stereo. I had, just under there. If I left it on, it actually drained the battery. So I'd get up in the morning, <laughs> I have to jumpstart my Austin Metro in order to get to work. Is there any other features about it? Okay, so there's some, some extra features about it. I, I see we've got our small indoor swimming pool here that I, I take it's been filled with that uh, refreshing uh, the electrical industry with the old Taplin Springs. Yeah, I've got some water. Why we got a load of water? We're going to start putting so electricity and water together. If I find a bit on this, it is waterproof to IP67. Is there going to be a large opportunity for electricians to be fault finding, say, underwater with their vault pen? No, well, we've got to find out. I don't know if a vault stick works if it's actually underwater. Okay, so chuck it in first. Let's see if it just, just throw it in. You don't care, do you? So it's, it's waterproof. Okay, so yeah. that's that's gone in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave. Power it. light's still on. You're not putting yours in. You're not brave enough. Just, just going to leave mine over here for a moment. I still want to use it in the future. Okay. okay. So yeah, so it's IP rated. Okay, so it still just about works, yeah? It still, still works, it's all okay. going there, that's good. Okay, so well, I don't know why we'd need to be testing cables underwater, but let's, uh, let's oh, hang on, and shall we put a little bit more of that tap water in there, just to make sure we've got enough in there. Top up the tap water. springs. Okay, so let's drop the cable in. Yep, okay. okay, so I'm going along the cable. Okay. Okay, so it doesn't work underwater then? No, it doesn't work underwater. And I'd suggest it's probably, yeah, it's not, probably not a good idea to be doing electrical work in the pool. <laughs> no, but, uh, no, not when it, <laughs> yeah, not when it was uh, yeah, full of water. So, okay, that's, that's good in case you know, we're on a building site where we drop it into those more onerous conditions. So we're saying we've, in, we've improved the, the voltage stick that I've had for 10 years. I noticed there was only one of those and I don't own it. I still own this one. Is that how we're going to play this game out? Yes. Okay, I don't mind that. You yeah, that's, that. that's, that's, yeah, so, yeah, that's all good. So in summary then, Obviously, that one there has got more features than this one here. This is probably an, almost a like-for-like a like replacement of that. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think you're right. Ergonomically, that feels better in the hand than that one. It's got a power on button, but of course, there is a chance that we leave it on, and obviously, the improvements are made on your one. Yeah, uh, it's, it's good. I mean, I think, yeah. I mean, you see a lot of these updated versions. Sometimes they have dual modes to do, but I think that little bar graph as you go closer is... Um, yeah. So if we were to take feature. that towards, say, a three-phase distribution board, obviously we're going to see that, you know, I mean, as we're going towards 400 volts, etc. It's going to shoot up really quickly to that voltage Should go range. berserk. <laughs> as it goes towards one of those. So as always, eFix, love to hear your comments. So if you've got a voltage pen that you're quite uh, proud of using in the electrical industry, not for safe isolation, obviously, but as part of your maybe exploratory inspection of an installation for fault finding, please make sure you leave those comments below and maybe we'll get a chance to have a look at the volt pen voltage stick or voltage indicator that you uh, comment below on in one of our next videos until then we'll see you